Hi, everybody. It's Agnes. And I've got Dee back. Hello, Dee. <laughs> How are you doing, Agnes? <laughs> Good. Part two. Part two. Part two. It's been overdue for a while, but we finally landed in the same little moment where we have time and we're yeah. able. So <laughs> happy to see you. It's great to see you. Your hair looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So we're doing a little just where you're up to, what you've been yeah. learning since the last interview. So yeah, what's going on? Um, man, a lot's, a lot's going on right now. Um, the biggest thing is like I'm in a really great space. So I'm happy and I'm healthy and, and um, there has been some movement financially. So that's sort of, uh, that's a little bit of a relief. Yeah. So that feels good. And, you know, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just living life. I'm just living life. And I put on a couple of pounds, so I feel great. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been getting a lot of compliments. Actually, yesterday I went out, uh, a friend of mine was uh, doing a music uh, video shoot and she asked me to, uh, to come through and support. And I was like, sure. And while I was at home getting dressed, I tried on like three shorts and none of them could fit. And I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Like, you know, and I've been going to the gym working out and then the fourth one finally was able to fit. And, but that just made me feel good because, um, you know, I've always wanted to like put on a little bit more, um, muscle weight and, um, I'm seeing the results now and I just, I feel really great. Yeah. So that whole process of getting dressed was just kind of like entertaining to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's good doing the physical training. It really supports the yeah. mind. Well, it's like we do our physical training and then we do our mental fitness as well. Yeah. And yeah. They, they go hand in hand. I'm doing some training too every day, increasing my strength and my, you know, yeah. I'm doing the whole body uh, my partner's actually training me because I've been getting just a lot of pain, like over the years, pain in my shoulders from doing this too much. Yeah, so yeah. You can't not exercise and not have the blood circulating through the body. You just start to get rigor mortis. Yeah. I love the gym. I really do. And my, um, my uh, morning process is sort of like, um, I never leave my house without making my bed. Yeah. Uh, I listen to, a lot of the, the the greats and they talk about these little things having some impact on the mind. So yeah. like I'll wake up and I'll make my bed and then I will just like sit and, you know, feel gratitude for, I have a timer, like five minutes of just feeling gratitude for my health yeah, or just having a roof over my head or just, you know, how dope my haircut is just, yeah. you know, just the little things. Yep. And um, if I don't go to the gym in the morning, I'll go in the afternoon. And um, it just, um, it's just putting myself in this mindset of doing something that, you know, allows my, my mind to kind of flow and get recentered and re-energize. And I realized by doing that, I sort of, um, my day just starts off on a much higher note and like it just keeps getting better and better. And if it doesn't go so great, then I'm only like dropping like to here and not here because I started so high, you know yep. what I mean? Yeah. So um, that's been really great in like my morning process and just going about my day, which has been super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And it, it, you know, you and I were talking behind the scenes about, you know, the importance of continued self love and, yeah and being happy and all those things and maintenance you're doing this stuff and you do get yeah just higher highs and 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 it's just joy and peace and and feeling good yeah. and and the bed making you know the mindfulness start something get out of bed finish it make the yeah. bed get yeah. up have your breakfast do the dishes so everything yeah you complete things along the way so there's not this big pile of stuff to do at the end of the day when you're tired Exactly. And when people come into my home, <clears throat> I always get the same compliment. 
they're like, oh God, you know, your, your home is so peaceful and it's so clean. And, you know, I've always said like, I'm just sort of a clean freak. So like, yeah, it's always like Zen and candles are going and it's really chill. And a friend came over like two weeks ago and she's like, oh, I don't know why you would ever leave your home. And I said, well, you know, I have to go to work. So <laughs> she's like, no, cause like when I'm here, I feel so clear. Like I can hear myself think everything is just so peaceful. And I love that when people come and they feel that energy. And, you know, I believe that your home life sort of represents your life. So if, yeah. it's, if it's chaotic and unkept, I feel like that's sort of how your life is and how your mind is. Yeah. Um, so I like to make sure like everything is nice and clean. And, yeah. you know, I'm sort of a minimalist, so I don't have a lot of stuff like clogging up space. So I like to have like a lot of space and, you know, to yeah. just move around and feel free. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just, it really just does something to my vibration. Yep. You know, but right. you're right. We were talking about like self-love. First of all, I'm just going to say this because I've seen a lot of people comment on this YouTuber says that you don't have to do this. You don't have to do your self-love. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Um, here's the thing, though. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. But what shows up in your life consistently will tell you what it is that you should be doing. Mm. So you're right. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to work on your self-love, you don't have to. But you're going to keep repeating certain patterns and certain things are going to keep showing up in your life. And when you start asking the question, well, why is this, why is that? And I've said this on so many different occasions is that your vibration speaks so much louder than any words that you could possibly offer. So if you're, you know, feeling like <clears throat> I don't need to work on my self-love, I'm just trying to get this particular, and it's usually regarding the SP, just trying to get this person back in my life, that situation might last for a month or two mm. until you start seeing the repeated cycles outplay itself again and again, then you're kind of like wondering what's going on. And, you know, I find that a lot of people are trying to avoid the work per se. And I would not advise that because the work is so important. Um, it's never about anyone else. It's always about you. It's always about feeling confident and feeling at peace and feeling worthy without any circumstance to, you know, hate that, you know? And for me, I remember thinking back about like how, do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of friend? What kind of sister? What kind of daughter? Um, you know, everything. And I realized, you know, those things are important to me. So I have to do my work. It wasn't about anyone else. And people always say, <clears throat> how are you so confident? Well, I build myself up just like how you would build a house. You lay the foundation. Mm. And the foundation is self-love, is self-worth, and yeah. self-appreciation. Yeah. So you lay that foundation, and then you start building. And, you know, your self-talk, your mental diet, all that stuff is so important. And, you know, uh, my advice to people is just to be very mindful of who you choose to listen to and what you choose to practice because at the end of the day, no one has to live your life, but you, yeah. uh, no one has to be with you, but you. Yeah. And so you could go through this journey, joyous and happy and carefree and mentally stable, mm. or you can go through it in a lot of heartache, hardships, and you know, a lot of pain. Um, at the end of the day, the choice is always yours. You know, it, it's no one else's. The choice is always yours. So I personally believe that, and this is my personal belief, is that the self-love is the utmost important thing. Because from that, you get the self-worth and the self-appreciation. And then now you're not needing anyone to kind of pour into you mm. and substitute anything 
and you understand that you are a complete whole person all by yourself. Yeah. So um, don't cheat yourself mm. out of that because I, that's the best gift that you could possibly give to yourself. Yeah. So just a little advice going into a new week, do not cheat yourself out of your own self-love and your own self-worth. And mm. Mm. Yeah. D, what would you say these days are your, just your weekly self-love practices? Oh. What do you do? Um, I'm now obsessed with the gym. Now yeah. that I'm seeing like so much like result, I'm totally obsessed with the gym because my body feels amazing. And again, goes back to the self-confidence. I look great and I yeah. feel great. Yeah. My self-confidence is through the roof. So I go to the gym. I do my affirmations in the shower. Yep. I love, doing that. I love just like, you know, just dancing around in the shower. I take way much longer than I need to, but <laughs> now you know why. <laughs> right? Yep. I'm in there just doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I love doing my affirmations um, in the shower. And uh, I may script maybe, I don't know, maybe two, three times a week. Okay. Just little things that I want to show appreciation for, you know, thank you so much. I have this great, amazing day last Wednesday, or I met this awesome person on the training. We had this beautiful conversation. So I just always like go back to, oh, this was really a beautiful moment. Let me just like mm. jot this down and I'll expand on it, you know, because I think I have a really creative mind. So it'll just like take on an entire life of its own. Yeah. And um, yeah, just, just watching my, myself talk, you know, um, complimenting myself and being mindful of where my thoughts are going. And it's interesting because when you're so in tune with yourself, when something is slightly out of whack, you automatically go like, oh, wait, why am I feeling this way? What am I thinking? What are my thoughts and beliefs? And you could quickly like, oh, just rewind, like a little tape, you know? And you just like go back a little bit, reset the point, like, oh no. I don't, I don't need to like go there because this is what's happening. I can totally shift that. Yeah. Also the, the left go um, experiment or, you know, that really plays a big part too. Like, am I just attaching this meaning to it? Because I could totally attach something else, you know? And um, yeah, it's been, it's been, I would say like those are my, my key sort of uh, processes that I use throughout the week on different days. I don't have a set routine. Yep. Like I don't put that pressure on myself. Like <clears throat> I have to meditate like, you know, every morning or I have to do this, you know, every night. It's sort of just like, what do I feel like doing right now? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I just go into that. I love to visualize at night going into bed because it takes me into this beautiful space. Yeah. And, and it's just, you know, I have the mindset to just be so creative and I'm just like, oh, this is beautiful. So when I wake up, sometimes I'm even surprised, like, wait, I'm, where am I? Like, yeah. you know, because you, you just mentally go there and people, sometimes I hear people say they can't visualize or they don't know how. And I want to say like everyone can because you have a brain and you have your mind and it's all in your mind. If you think back to when you were a kid and you had all these imaginary friends, no one could tell you like they weren't there and you weren't playing with them. Mm. So it's really just, I think we're trying too hard and people say, I can't do this. I can't do that. First of all, you're talking yourself out of it because you're already saying you can't. Mm. So if you tell yourself, you know, I can visualize. I can have this beautiful um, mental picture and really like bring the emotions to life. You can do it. Trust and believe like you can do it. So if you go there mentally and you're able to visualize and you're able to like, you know, expand on a scene or a conversation and just really bask in that moment, um, it brings about such like clarity. And then you start feeling good. Like, it's almost like this movie you're creating in your mind's eye and, and it just becomes like this, this beautiful thing. I think everyone can visualize. It's mm. just, sometimes we just want to focus on one things, but we can't 
visualize in that moment because we have so much blockage on that topic. You know, we have so much resistance on that particular topic that we're trying to like tap into. So sometimes you can pick another topic, you know, or choose to believe something else about that specific topic mm. and just kind of like let yourself go. Yeah. yeah. And I think too, like if you struggle with visual imagining, yeah, you can do audio imagining where you hear someone's voice or you feel right. someone's arm or you, yeah. you know, you taste amazing food or whatever. So you can add in to, until you can get good at those other senses. Yeah. Do the easier senses first, then you can hit the visualizing with the imaginal eyes at a later date, but build up to it through using the other senses. I find that's been an easier way around the circle for those people that say, I can't see anything. I can't visualize to do. Okay. Yeah. Well, don't start with that. Try this. Yeah. Yeah. Or even like scripting, you know, if you can't visually see yeah. it, then write it out. Yes. Only you know what you want to experience. Exactly. You know? And it doesn't have to be a perfectly constructed sentence. Just, write down what is it that you would like exactly. oh i love my new brand new fancy red car you know yeah um i'm so ha like i went shopping on fifth avenue and i was you know it felt good to walk into these stores and buy mm. all the you could just write it down yeah. and as you're writing that emotion you'll start to feel that emotion you know because yeah when you're putting things on paper and you're looking if if i write down the dog jump over the moon immediately you you envision a dog jumping over the moon yeah it might be crazy but you can like wait the dog jump over the moon you know what i mean so just yeah. like writing it down you're able to see like the mental picture of it which is also like really helpful yeah yeah and start with something like that that's quite distinct in its outline like yeah. the moon the dog we both we all know what those things look like the shapes you know, yeah. you can see that. So it is an easier place to start. Yeah, for mm. sure. Yeah. Mm. That's fantastic. It's fantastic hearing, you know, because I've known you a while. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so good to see what's happened in between and, and what's yeah. going on. And what are you, how are you going in terms of the work stuff? Is, is, have you changed jobs since I last saw you or what's happening there? Um, I'm trying to think if I no. So I think the last time I was that I spoke to you, I can't remember if I had just started at this engineering firm um, that I'm currently at right now. And um, so my next manifestation, and um, just want to remember to share something with you. But so my next manifestation is. I think that anytime you achieve something, you're, you're kind of like, okay, what can I do next? And yes. I remember when I manifested this job and how great that felt down to my starting date, you know, it was just so on point all across the board. And so now I'm like taking that, um, that manifestation and really want to expand on it. So now I'm even reaching for, um, a higher position and, um, the key for me is okay i want to i want to make a certain amount of uh annual salary yeah so that's my next uh process and that's going to be really fun because um i like to take on things that i feel like okay this is this is going to be fun i don't really see how it's going to all come to pass but i like playing with stuff and i think that's why manifestation is so easy for me because for me it's it's just fun like okay this this is like from the outside looking in it seems like no that's a pretty big goal or that seems almost impossible but for me the way i look at it is like okay this is fun this is um i don't even want to use the word challenging because challenging oftentimes imply hard yeah and i don't think anything is really necessarily hard i think you can make it hard by the the thoughts that you hold about it yeah i just go like okay this is going to be fun and interesting yeah so interesting is my word this is going to be fun and interesting so let's see what else i can manifest and a very good friend of mine um introduced me to jeanette ma 
Um, I hope I'm saying her name right. And she has a concept. It was like four different, um, it was like four different recordings. And she calls the process done deal it. And it's pretty much living in the end. It's pretty much, um, it is done. It, you know, it's just a different term, but her, her term is um, done deal it. And so I've been doing that and the results have been astounding. Like, I was like so floored um, because it's, you, so you have this concept like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, but you don't have to do all these processes because it is done. It's a done deal. You know, you're living in the end. So when we think about manifesting, sometimes I like to say to people, it's manifested because it's already done. You know, it's a done deal. So you, you go about your life as though this thing that you want has already happened, whether that's the new job, a new uh, improved bodily uh, condition, um, you know, your skin texture, like having nice skin. I get so many compliments these days on my skin and I use law of attraction for that because there was a yeah. point when I was always breaking out and all these different yeah. and that doesn't happen anymore because I implemented like, oh, my skin is so nice and smooth and clean. And yeah. And my best friend is like, why won't you tell me what supplement you're <laughs> using? And I'm like, I'm not taking any supplement, you know? Yeah. So the whole process of the done deal in it is just saying to yourself, oh, it's a done deal. So like, if you think about something that you want to do, or even if you're in a mindset where you're going to complain about your job, it's like, wait, why would I complain about my job? It's, I have a great job. It's amazing. It's done. So it automatically like takes you there. So you're not trying to accomplish anything mm. because it's already done, you know? And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand about um, living in the end, it's done. You're enjoying your life. You're enjoying yeah. this experience, whether it's with a specific person, whether it's a job, whether you want to travel more. Living in the end means that it is done. So there's no need to talk about the past, right? Because I see a lot of people like to talk about stuff that happened and they keep telling the same story. But if you are now living in the end, you wouldn't be talking about that stuff. You would be talking about how happy and joyous and just mm. blissful you are about where you are. And that's yeah. what people don't understand what living in the end really, 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 really means. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And it's being relaxed and being in a thank you state you yeah. are you're not seeking and and that yeah. whole thing because we talk about conscious creation conscious creation but really it's conscious selection it's already there and you are taking it as yeah. your preference and yeah. that doesn't mean all the other things cease to exist they just drop back through lack of attention and the thing you want comes forward through focus and attention so yeah it is, it isn't about, you're not really creating anything. You are selecting yeah. through pinpointed focus. And I think that's a probably much more accurate description is we are selecting constantly. And when we go back and talk about the past, you've just selected, Hey, I want another wave of crap to come my way. Cause I'm yeah. telling about this problem again and I'm reinfecting myself with it again. Yeah. Yeah. And anytime you say to someone, Hey, you don't want to talk about this, but we are yeah. sort of in this mindset where we believe talking about something somehow brings sort of like this relief mm. or hates you in your manifestation. And really it doesn't. What it does is it takes you a few steps backwards without yep. you even consciously yeah. realizing it. Exactly. You know? um, but you know, Abraham says, you know, um, words don't teach. No. Nope. Life experiences do. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. you can only allow someone to have those experiences until it finally like clicks like a light switch, like, okay, maybe I should stop doing this. Maybe yeah. I should stop talking about this so much and yeah. offering these vibrations, you know? Yeah. So 
yeah, life experiences teaches. It does. It does, it does, it does. Until you get it, until you get it, until you get it, yeah. it keeps coming back. <laughs> and, and and it never stops. Like, no. you know, um, I told someone the other day, I said, as long as you have breath in your body, you're going to have contrast. And it's it's that's just the human experience that you're having here on earth. So even the gurus of all gurus, have contrast you know mm. everyone has little moments but the only difference is it might be easier for those gurus to sort of pull themselves back like oh wait mm. you know i recognize this i see where this is going you know let me scale back and you know not just like add momentum to it mm. you know, let me not feed that vibration so everyone has contrast everyone has things that happen that are seemingly out of their control because nothing really is. It just seems that way. Yeah. Um, and just being in a mindful state of, okay, let me just scale back a little bit, but mm. it never ends. Your self-love work never ends. Your, you know, your appreciation for things that you have or things that you want never ends. And as long as you're here on earth, it's, it's never going to be like a smooth sail because you're always going to have things that, you want to experience more or something new that's come into play, something mm -hmm. else that will catch your attention and focus that you have to give your time and energy to. So it never really stops. It's just having, you know, the mindset of catching it in the moments and how to sort of tweak it as you, as you go along. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. I remember um, there was a couple I wrote a success story of theirs about how they manifested a house with no mortgage. Mm. And while I was visiting them and we were talking about, I went to stay with them overnight because they lived a long way away from where I was in Sydney. Yeah. And they said, look, why don't you just come and stay and then we can talk about the story. And so I stayed there, but the real nugget that came out of that, they, that story was good, but it was this yeah. other story they told me about how when their son got stabbed, at a train station and ended up in critical condition in hospital. They said from the moment that they heard their son had been stabbed, they started to say, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I remember at the time I was listening to them going, what? And they said, we understood that if we got into the huge wave of negative emotion of this, we would be drawing to ourselves something else in yeah. that energy vibe so they said they drove to the hospital and kept thanking they were quite religious and they said thank you god we appreciate that you know there's so many great lessons in this and we thank you and they kept praying prayers of thanks and i remember yeah. going wow that was mind-bending to me at that time yeah yeah was it's funny you mentioned that I, man just talk about alignment just this morning I was talking to a friend, um, I was telling her, uh, because she's also very spiritual, um, like believe in God in the way most people do. And she was like, you know, but I'm having some difficulty trying to understand why certain prayers are not answered. And I told her about this experience I had maybe like four or five years ago, I was driving from Connecticut and I was listening to someone either on a podcast or YouTube and the guy was saying, Hey, do you want to know why some answers don't get, um, some prayers don't get answered. And I was like, yeah, I want to know. And I remember pulling off the highway and thinking, Oh, I got to hear this because at the time it felt like none of my prayers were being answered. So I was like, God must be on vacation. He must be asleep. I don't know where he is, <laughs> but he's not receiving my emails. And I want to know, like, what's going on? Mm. And I remember sitting just off the side of the highway and listening to that guy. And I had goosebumps because he was saying that when you pray and if you're praying for something and you're not saying thank you, then you're only asking for more of that stuff. So he was like, change the way you pray. Yep. Say, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Never God, please, I need this, I need that. Always yeah. think, and I thought, 
it was such a mind blowing experience. Yeah, I yeah. Sat there for almost thirty minutes in shock, and I remember going back in my mind thinking, "Oh, so that's why that didn't work out, and that's why that didn't happen yeah. because of how I was offering prayer." you know, from a place of lack and a place of need. Yes. And so from that point on, I started to slowly but surely like change the way I pray. And that led me to start reading more, you know, and diving into certain things and understanding, you know, the law of attraction and how that works in spirituality. And so I was sharing with her just that this very morning. And she was like, that actually makes a shitload of sense yes and I was like yeah so for the next 30 days just try to whatever happens just thank you yeah thank you for this thank you for that and she was like that's that's just unbelievable mind-blowing and I thought yeah that's how I felt like four or five years ago on that highway because I was just my life was so shit (laughs) yeah I was like okay, I really want to know, like, you know, what's going on. So, yeah. and it's funny you mentioned that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, <laughs> um, it's profound. Cause it, I mean, to do that in the moment, you know, when you've been hit from the back of a, you yeah. know, with a brick and you're like, you go, okay, hang on. I got to say thank you really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But that was such a, an amazing story. I, I will never forget that story to the day I die. I was like, wow, that, yeah. I can't say I'd know many people that would have done that under those no, conditions. And it's, it's not an easy thing to no, do. No, it's, it's not. It's a very powerful thing to do. It is. Yeah. It is. Brilliant. <laughs> well, we've got a little Q&A we need to join in on. So... Okay. Dee, thank you for such a, well, we had two conversations, the pre and the interview. So I've got to sit (laughs) for an hour, which is excellent. Thank you for joining and sharing and, you know, because I know a a lot of people loved your interview and and they, you know, there was requests and I said, yes, yes, I will interview Dee. It's coming. It's coming. So we have done it. The little bookend. So, I, I told myself I'm not going to do an interview with you on my channel until I can do it in person. So <laughs> however that's going to manifest, like, that, that's where I'm at. I thought about it and I thought, yeah, I'm supposed to do this interview with Anya's. Then I thought, but this is not how I want to do it. I'm going to do it in person. So I'm setting the intention and however that manifests. Yeah. Thank you. It's already done. Thank you. It's so, already yeah. done. Well, I think Dan Radio Style is um, visualizing the same thing. So I think the USA is going to, it's going to, uh, what's the word? Create a vacuum and I'm just going to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you come here, like, you know, I got some great Jamaican spots to take you to. Oh, so, yeah. that I would love. That <laughs> I would absolutely love. That alone is worth the trip. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Dee. For anybody that hasn't seen Dee's first interview, I'm going to put the link to that part one down below. I will also put links to how to contact Dee and her YouTube channel, which she has started a while ago now. So you can yeah. hop over for some more good vibes on yeah. Dee's channel as well. So, good vibes energy mindset yeah. shift um my whole yeah. concept is a mind mindset shift energy um because that's where the true gem is and once you switch you can't switch back i've yeah. tried yeah. Trust. <laughs> yeah yeah i remember a friend saying to me once she said it's like when you go to alcoholics anonymous and then you decide, hang on a minute, no, I'm going to go back out and drink. She says, even though you're out drinking, you never forget about Alcoholics Anonymous, that meeting and what they're doing in there. It's in your yeah. head forever. She yeah, says, you can't yeah. escape it. You can't go back. <laughs> Once you've known too much, you've just yep. known too much and you yeah, cannot go back. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, lots of love, everyone. And I will see you in the usual place. Yeah. And what you can see, D on her channel as well. So lots of love and see you soon.